Praise the Lord. It's been, it's been a little bit. Um, the Lord, for the past couple months, you know, wanted really me to talk about this specifically, and it's about peace. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, and when it comes to peace, you know, I know for myself, you know, I want, uh, you know, moments in our lives that it's very hard to seek peace. Sometimes we may not know, or sometimes we're in that situation, that season that, you know, we look to the sky and we ask the Lord what's going on. And, you know, we need to understand this one thing, and the Lord put this scripture um, specifically for this church. Um, it's a reminder of what he promised us for this year, and that's the year of peace. This scripture is Psalms 85.8, and of course, um, obviously, if you guys have your Bibles or at home, if you guys do have this, I do, obviously, we get the chance to highlight this because this is something that's going to be all year round. Um, this is something we're going to put life on at home, um, in the church, of course, and, you know, for any brother that you know, any sister that you know that that's really going through it. So this scripture is very important. So it's Psalms 85.8, and it says, I will listen to what God the Lord says. He promises peace to his people, his faithful servants, but let them not turn to folly. All right. So folly, when I looked up uh, the definition of it, is foolishness. And there's different ways that we could be fooled. Right. So we could be fooled by the world and what it can offer. It could be fooled by the enemy sometimes or even ourselves. You know, and that's the most important thing, you know, without even realizing it. But I want to say this, church. One thing I want to say is when God gives a promise, he holds on to that promise. No matter what happens, no matter what you go through, even if you turn around and feel like he's not there. And there's a reason for that. How many of you have seen a rainbow before? Everybody raise a show of hands. Cool. Some of you may or may not know. That rainbow symbolizes a promise that the Lord made, right? And we still see it to this day. And let me get a little bit more into that. You know, after the flood that happened with Noah, right? The Lord, after seeing, obviously, what happened in, out of his will, wanted it that way, but created that. It wasn't through any parade or pride, none of that. It was through him, the Lord creating that himself to show us when we're in trouble or we're not, may, maybe not seeing that, you know, that promise that he's trying to give us. He created it for that reason. And to this day that we still see those rainbows. Amen? Amen. And, you know, moving forward. You know, a scripture that came into mind was Isaiah 43, 2. And it says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. Amen. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Amen. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Amen. The flames will not set you ablaze. Amen. So, church, what I'm saying is I'm not talking about le legit rivers. I'm not talking about just the waters. I'm talking about the everyday life that we go through. When we leave from here, right, going to work. Uh, um, you, you know, maybe meet up some family, some friends, you know, or just being, you know, driving out here in the street. You know, it, it can be frustrating, but you, you have to understand that when the Lord creates a promise, that promise is eternal like his word. You understand that that's, that's, you know, until we meet him and then he lets us know that promise that he holds on to. So we need to hold on to that promise, even if we're not seeing it, even though sometimes we not hear it, or maybe, you know, we're not unsure. But he promised his church peace, and that's what I'm here to remind you today. That's what the Lord wanted me to remind you today. There is peace, there will be peace, and we shall walk in peace. Amen. 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 So now, some of you may ask, Brandon, how would, you know, peace, peace could be so many different things. How would we even go about it? Well, I, you know, the Lord had wanted to break it down a little bit more. You know, so we're going to, first topic is going to be the think, thinking of peace, peace of mind. And that's something that a lot of us do struggle with. A lot of us do, like I said, overthink. You know, a lot of us, you know, put ourselves in situations and try to imagine these situations in our head, you know, without really actually going to the Lord directly and allowing us to entrust in him, you know, with our minds, with our tongues, with our bodies, right? So one thing he, he, he wanted to show me was uh, second uh, sorry, second, uh, Timothy 1.7. For God has not given us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and a love of a sound mind. You know, so I want to just kind of get a little bit into that sound mind, you know. That sound mind is, is, is complete peace internally, right? When we think that we have no worries, that we're literally just giving it to the Lord. So allowing the Lord to take it from there. You know, we're not overthinking the situation. We're not doubting it. We're not, you know what, God, what about this? Give me a sign. No, we're completely entrusting him with our minds to know that there will be peace. 
You know, and, and that's so important because, again, we all struggle with it, right? But it's a matter of how do we go about it, right? How do we go about, you know, applying that peace in our minds, you know? Because that's one of the hardest battles sometimes. You know, a lot of people want to blame the enemy. It's not the enemy. Sometimes it's ourselves. You know, sometimes we put that veil over ourselves to cover ourselves, and then we're out here trying to point at everybody when in reality – we need to really spiritually self-reflect and really understand, like, you know what? Maybe I'm making that decision wrong, right? And have that self-accountability. And, and, and again, it's, it's, it's very important because, again, we don't want to overthink a situation. I know times in my life where, you know, I thought of something at one point and I was wrong. And the Lord showed me I was wrong, right? He, he showed me, Brandon, this is, this is not the situation you think. This is, you know, and the Lord revealed to me, this is what it actually is. You know, so let's not... Make that mistake in overthinking or, or try to judge that situation based on, on, on what we know in the world, based on that worldly knowledge. Because at the end of the day, the Lord has a different plan. We don't understand the Lord. But when that spirit hits us, that's when everything just opens up. You know, physically, spiritually, everything. And, and, and that's the thing. We have to entrust him in order for, for him to do that. You know what I mean? When we have doubts, we're turning away from the Lord. Because the, the Lord is always there, right? It's us. You know, Lord is right here, and we're going like this. We're walking away from him, right? It's not him like, well, I don't think he can handle it no more, so I'm going to go this way. He doesn't do that. And, and that's the thing. We do it to ourselves sometimes, and we have to acknowledge that. And, and going into the next scripture that, that really talks about that, you know, is Romans 8, 6. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. You know, so when we're really saying these scriptures, this is not a book that you will go to the library and read. This is a life. This is life. The book itself is life. When we apply these scriptures, they come to life. When you take a scripture and you put it on yourself or another person or even in the situation that you're in, it comes to life. And what ends up happening, things change. But it's not just the, the, the word alone. The word is, is, is backed up by the Lord. The Lord is the one that's basically illustrating everything that's in the Bible. That's through him. These are bits and parts of him. That, that, that all come from him. He's the main source, right? But he, you know, he, he's, he's such a great God that, that you know, he, he allows us to even have this word. He didn't need to give us this word, right? He didn't need to do any of this, but he, you know, had so much mercy, mercy that we need to learn. Mercy that to the point that if we even try to understand, it'd just be too much. But he had that mercy and he gave that to us so we can understand that there is peace, church. There is peace. Isaiah 26, 3. And again, this is all about the mind, right? You keep, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. And this is what I'm talking about. You know, the everyday day that we go about our time, we work, we're going through certain situations, we have to apply that peace mentally. You know, the word is there. You know, the word is there, and the Lord's there with the word when we apply it, right? When we take that word and we put it on ourselves. There's no mountain that the Lord cannot move. There's no wall the Lord cannot break. There's nothing that, that he can't overcome. So why are we second-guessing him? And don't get me wrong, it, it does happen. But this is a reminder to understand that, you know, who our God is. Why our God is, who, who, you know, basically our God, and, and, and how he, over, you know, he walked through those waters, right? He healed people. He went and, and took anybody else in the darkness and brought them to the light and showed them differently, right? And we're in his image. So we need to do the best that we can to try to follow the Lord in that aspect. Because it's like I said the other day, you know, the apostles, when they first started, they didn't know. They weren't people that were automatically knew when and what to do. You know, that's why them following the Lord allowed them to learn spiritually, getting that wisdom from the Lord, but as well as, you know, getting boldness, getting compassion, right? Uh, um... Every quality of the Lord they've learned, but it wasn't through just getting it instantly. Sometimes, you know, you're going to have to go through those seasons, but appreciate those seasons because those seasons, and I think I talked to you about this the other day, you know, when we appreciate those seasons because he's taking the time, the Lord is taking his own time because he loves us to put us in those seasons, right? So we can be able to, you know, saying to benefit, you know, to, to, to learn, to be able to get closer to him, right? The fact that he's even taking that time shows us that love, right? And, and, and the thing is, when you go through the Lord is when you will find true peace. You have to go through the Lord to find peace. And that's something we struggle with. You know what I mean? Everybody. And it's so funny because, well, it's not funny depending on how you look at it. But a couple weeks ago, um, you know, I had, I had a cat named Loaf, right? And the reason why we called Loaf at the time, you know, he, he was struggling um, to walk. 
half of his body, um, unfortunately, you know, wasn't able to function, but he would still try. And the reason why I'm bringing up my cat, you know, uh, we did have to, you know, put him down eventually through the Lord's calling. But he taught me something, you know, and, and I'm going to kind of get into a little bit more of that right now. You know, Loaf was a type of cat. He was very quiet. You know, he'll move around when he can. You know, he'll play with his brothers and sisters. No matter the challenge that was ahead of him, where he was, it was hard for him to jump, it was hard for him to move around, he was still doing it. He was still trying to do it, right? And the biggest thing was that the day, literally a couple, I would say probably about like 10, 15 minutes before it even happened, right? Before the Lord said, you know, hey, you know, it's, 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 it's his time because he's suffering. He was suffering. The problem was with, with, with Loaf specifically was, you know, it's hard for him to walk, of course. You know, going using the restroom obviously was a challenge for him. And, and again, it would just cause a lot of issues for him specifically. You know, and the Lord said, you know what, it's, it's his time, he's, he's suffering. And it was very hard, of course, you know, letting him go. Of it, but, but right before he left, it's, it's like he knew. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I've never seen him purr as loud as he did right before it was going to happen. Like loud, guys. When I mean loud, I mean like louder than me. <laughs> so like literally right now, like it was just so loud that I was just looking at the um, – you know, the kennel, I'm just like, you know, how, like, in my mind at that moment was like, how can you be so happy? But then it, it, that's when it triggered me. And it was like, wow, man, he knows he's going home. Like, he knew before it even happened, the Lord was already, was already working. You know what I mean? Because we, we definitely prayed about it. And, um, you know, it showed me, man, like, he had pure peace. You know what I'm saying? He had peace before he was even going to go through that. And you know what? He wasn't like how most people would be scared, maybe anxious. You know, maybe having anxiety, but no, he was at perfect peace. Something I've never, like, I haven't seen from a cat, you know. So when I'm looking at him, I'm like, wow, man, like, he has pure peace, and he was ready. Like, he was, that, and that's when I was like, wow, Lord, like, you know when it's it's time. You know when it's perfect. You know when, you let us know. You know, he lets us know. You know, We never walk in that confusion. We never walk in, that, you know, wondering or that what if. That's not from the Lord. The Lord will let you know. If even if others can't see it, he will let you know. And, and, and he let Loaf know. And, was, and it's funny because when I saw that, I was like, wow, man, like, it, it, the Lord can use anything to show you anything, right? He confounds the wise with foolish things. And the thing with me is, like, when I saw that, you know, I, I was, at first it's always like, you know, it's, it's hard to let go. It's, you know, you don't want him to go, but it's like I knew where he was going. You know, and I was, in my heart, it was peace. Like, you know what? He's, I know where he's going. And you know what? He's happy to go. He's ready to go. You know, and, and that just taught me something a little bit about peace. And, and that's kind of why I'm bringing it back here because we know where we're going to go. And we need to remind ourselves where we're going to go, right? There's times that, you know, of course, we may have done things, but hell was not made for us. You know, hell, and that's the thing a lot of people forget. Hell was not made for us. Heaven was, right? But we have to do our part, too everybody like it's one of those things that the lord's doing his part and we have to figure out how we're going to do ours and walking in that peace everything i'm saying with these verses this is what we have to live by this is what we have to apply to ourselves you know we have to think that peace you know it's, and it's funny because the next one is now speaking peace right and going into proverbs 18 21 it says death and life are the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit so when we talk about it, now we're thinking it, right? Now we got to speak about it because now the tongue is powerful, right? So now it's like through the situation that's going on, through whatever it may be, you know, you speaking against this was, you know, again, what, what the Lord's allow, was going to allow to make the difference, 100%. You know, when we speak things, it comes to life, you know. And even for me, for a, lot of, for a long time, I had to understand, like, you know, we need to be careful when we talk about it. And that's something that we're, I'm, work, I'm definitely working on. We're all working on it in our own way, right? And talking about that peace is important. You know, and the Lord mentions that. Even Ephesians 4, 29. Do not let unwholesome words ever come out of your mouth, but only such sp speech as, as is good for building up others. And that's the thing, too. You know, when you're in those situations where you know it's not going to go that way, right? It's not going to be that, that, that peaceful route, walk away. If you have that chance, walk away. Because at the end of the day, there's, there's only so much that we can do, but, but there's a lot that the Lord can do. And we need to rely on and trust in him like, hey, you know, this may not have worked out right. Let me hold my tongue. Let the Lord do the rest. You know, let him do the rest. Because at the end of the day, when we're forcing it, when we're pushing the agenda, 
That's not what's going to help people. That's not what's going to help people get on board. That's not what's going to help the world. People who don't know about the Bible, don't know about God like that, that's not, that's not going to help them you know, get more into it. Because let's just be honest. People in the world looking for peace. But they're just looking at it, you know, they're obviously looking, um, looking for it in, in the wrong ways. You got us in the church, you know what I'm saying? We're looking for God to find that peace. That's part of all the things, of course, right? But the most important thing is, is getting that relationship. That's where the peace comes in, right? It's not just about praying for a little about peace and then boom, ma you know, magic happens. No, it's about obviously genuinely wanting to know the Lord, knowing what the Lord has done, and getting to want to know him personally, right? Getting to know him, you know, obviously, you know, coming together with the brothers and sisters and, 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 and sharing that, you know, sharing it when it's time. And I feel like that's the most important thing because, you know, a lot of us pray, but it's like, are we praying and asking him as like a wish, like a genie, or we're actually genuinely wanting to know him and letting to and letting – Letting us see what he wants to do with us, right? Letting us see what he, the way he wants to do for us. Because remember, he's our father. So, you know, again, I, I can't speak, speak so much about it. But, you know, based obviously in the Bible, based on my father now, they would always want the best for you. You know, the Lord would always want the best for you. He wants peace in your life. He wants love. He wants, com he wants everything that's positive in your life because he loves us. He loves us that much. Again, he literally went, like I said, Jesus went on the cross for people he didn't even know. God tortured right went went through so much hardships got made fun of for people he didn't even know that's love right and but the peace that, that that was acquired after the peace that he's able to give us the peace that he's able to provide for us church is we can only imagine and even then it won't even be enough because it'll be just so overwhelming to know and and again this is why we need to speak about these things and think about these things it's important you know, this is not something we just do on Sundays and then walk off. This is something we do every single day, through every situation, through every single um, encounter that we have, you know, peace. Because we all have a past here. We all went through trauma. We all went through our own form of, of, you know, torture, right? And we're all seeking that peace. But in order to seek peace, you have to seek the Lord. That's so important. Even for those that are starting out online or for those that are here that are just unsure or going through it, man, like God can give you that. But we have to sacrifice. The Lord already made the sacrifice. We need to make that sacrifice. If we, you know, if, if we genuinely want those things in our life, in our family's life, in, in our friend's life, in, in anything, you know, um, our pets, anything, right? And going into, okay, going into the next thing is now applying peace, right? To apply it now, because now we're hearing it. Right, we're hearing it. We're reading the scriptures. We're praying. Now we need to apply it to our life. And, and Philippians four nine says, "Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put into practice, and the Lord of peace will be with you." So anything that you're that you're hearing from the Lord, or anything that He's trying to show you, or anything that He's trying to open up for you, take note of that because through Him, and I get I say this again with Him because. When Jesus was on this, on this earth, he was the prince of peace. God is, is, is trying to give us that peace. It's, it's what are we doing about it? Are we, are we running towards him? Are we running or are we running away from it? Are we running for that goodness of him or running away from it? You know, and, and that's the question here. You know, what are we doing about it to achieve this peace? You know, and there's probably certain people like, God, like, I've done this and I've done this and I don't know what's going on. Why am I having this peace in my life? Why is this trauma happening in my life? Why is everything going bad? But it's like, again, what, what you're learning from the Lord, are you really applying? And are you really putting that on your life? Are you really going ahead and, and, and really seeking or being open about it to, to allow the Lord to change you or change yourself? Allow, allow you to be open just to remove the things that we're holding on to so that he can do the work, right? And, and that's the question that I know I ask myself, like, am I being open enough to go and allowing the Lord change it, or am I holding on to something? He's trying to grab it. Now we're fighting, right? He's God's trying to pull it this way. I'm trying to pull it that way. We're getting nowhere. There's no growth there. Like spiritually, it's it's it's, you know, and then we're still questioning why we haven't got this or why hasn't God blessed me with this, you know. And going into Hebrews, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, twelve fourteen, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. And that's so important.
Because the thing is what people don't understand, and the Bible talks about us being peacemakers. So anything that we're doing, any conversation we're having, once it turns into a debate or to that argument, because there are healthy debates, but there's those arguments, right? And there's also those misunderstandings. Or it could be just, you know, not seeing eye to eye. At that moment, we have to really sit down and just be like, you know what? Like, it's not even worth that, right? It's not even worth that. Let me give that to the Lord. You know, let me give that to let the Lord work. Or if there's something within me, Lord, that you want to do in me, allow that to be done, right? And that's what he's saying here, to, to live in peace. Try to do the best you can with everyone, not to jump conclusions, not to go and, and try to react based on emotion, because that's the problem. It's okay to be emotional. The problem with emotion is when you're acting based on that emotion, it's when it becomes a problem, because that's when it's not from the Lord, it's from the flesh. You know, and that's what you have to remind ourselves, too, like, like how is God doing this? Is it me doing it, or is it God doing it? And that's when you got to separate it. That's when you got to really go into that closet and be like, Lord, what's going on? You know what I mean? I, I don't know. You know, and, and it's okay to not understand. It's okay to not know. It's okay. You know, when I first started this walk, I thought you had to know everything. I thought you had to, you know, come equipped. I thought you had to, you know, um, you know, try to know everything and not show that, you know, like that, that, you know, obviously what's really going on. And that's the thing you can't, you know, and it's funny because even with my mom, you know, you know, through the process that she's going through, and it's something I want to share a little bit. Something you may or may not know, you know, um, you know, again, it was happened about a couple, like, I would say about a month ago, you know, my mom you know, ended up going to the hospital, you know, a lot of issues that she was battling with, you know, again, she, you know, she did start off, um, you know, with type two diabetes. And then again, it just started taking away from there. You know, at that point, of course, for some that have went through this or some that haven't went through this or whatever the case may be, you know, it's very, very hard, um, especially for me, like me growing up, you know, me and my mom, you know, she's probably watching this as well. Sorry, mom. You know, we, <laughs> we always went through back and forth. You know what I mean? We always didn't see eye to eye because even at that time, she was preaching me to the Lord at that time. And I wasn't seeing it because I was in the world. You know what I'm saying? I was with all the gang members. I was out here selling drugs. I was doing this, doing that, different women. And like, and that's the thing I'm trying to explain to you. Like, going through those things, you know, really show me and, and really show me becoming a man, right? Becoming a man of God. Not even just a man of the world, but man of God, right? So when 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 he did the work in me and, and started showing me certain things, you know, I was able to forgive my mom, forgive my parents. Even though at first they didn't want to do it. They're like, man, Brandon, I don't know. You did this. You, uh, you did a couple things. I'm not going to lie. But... You know, it humbled me enough that I was like, you know what, man, like, I did wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't blame every, you know, it, it can't all fall on one person sometimes. And it's like, we have to take that account and be like, you know what, man, it, it was my fault too, you know? And, you know, and that's just kind of just showing that peace too. Because, again, I wanted peace with my family. You know what I'm saying? When I left to go to Massachusetts, when I first came here, when I first met Pastor, you know, I didn't even say about it, no, but I just bounced. I left. I was like, literally, the, the week before I was sleeping in parks, you know what I mean? Like, I was not even hearing at that point. And I was just like, you know what, man, like, I was homeless technically, so I was just like, you know what, they would throw me out, whatever the case may be, and I left, you know, and then it showed me, like, you know what, man, like, you know, I'm not going to lie, like, I was part of that, you know what I mean, because I, I could have went and, and made it better, you know, even though it was hard, you know, because, again, there's a lot of spiritual warfare going on, but at the same time, it's like, I could have made that difference, too, you know what I mean, I could have been that light in the family, right, and, again, this is this is why, and that's why we, we don't regret nothing in the walk, because at the end of the day, God made it in that way to build his soldiers in a certain way, where he's able, allow us to encounter Obviously, those seasons, those spiritual battles that we go through, you right? Because he, he sees that potential in us that we don't see, right? We're always undermining ourselves. We're always thinking that we're not good enough. We're always thinking of, you know, the worst in us when in reality God is, is the opposite. God is like, you're a king, right? Yeah? You're a queen, whatever you are, right? You're, you're with me, right? You're going to stand next to me, and we're going to face this together, you know? And these are things that we realize along the way, you know? And, um, again, and, and just to show you, like, even my mom, like, just having that, you know, that belief and that faith, man, and, you know, hearing from the doctors, like, whatever that we thought that was gone and lost, you know, her eyesight and, and you know, her be able to walk again. And, you know, it can be recovered. So so praise the Lord for that, right? Praise the Lord because, you know, when you're in those situations for real, not like, you know, well, this person said something to me and I'm, you know, feel some type of way. No, like real situations. Not saying that's not real, but situations where it's like it's, 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 it's going to affect you, right? The people you love, right? Sometimes, the, you know, um... You know, things that you go through, your job, right, things that, that we care about, like, affect us in a way. And it's like, you know what, man, like, God is good, man. God will always see you through, you know. And throughout that whole process, my mom going through that, I had peace, you know what I mean? Because I knew who my creator was. I understood that, you know, that God, he's a healer. He's a miracle worker. God is, is somebody that, that um, did changes in my life, that he did change in my brother's life, that did change in so many people's lives that I know. And he's still doing it, and he's still there. So, and, and that's the thing, like, you know, having that faith and, and believing in that peace.
through when it's chaos, right? When, when it's the worst, when you're really going through it, when you're by yourself behind closed doors, not in church, crying, you know, going, really going through it emotionally, really relying on him and letting him take care of it, putting it in his hands and allowing him to take it from his hands and, 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 and allow him to do his work. But how is he going to do the work if we're not trying to put it in his hands? What is he going to work with? So it's, it's and, and going into, again, this is, again, just applying it. Applying everything that we're, we're hearing now, thinking, speaking, now actually applying it as well. Uh, Ephesians 4.3, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. Do anything that anybody here has that they need to mend, now's the time. Mend anything, any relationship, any person you ever did wrong, mend it. But, but allow the Holy Spirit to guide you to mend it. Don't force the mending process. Don't force the forgiveness. It has to come from the heart. And that's why when it comes to free will, the Lord can't touch that. The enemy can't touch that. That's free will. That's something that he gave us to do because he wanted it to be genuine. And we need to do that. Any relationships, you know, again, I know I had a couple that I had to mend myself. You know what I mean? My brother was being one of them. You know, after a couple years of not speaking, he's probably listening to this as well. You know, the, you know, it took, you know, my wife, it took other people like, hey, Brandon, like, you know, maybe, you know, whatever happened, just mend it. You know what I mean? Like, just, of course, do it because you want to do it because, because you know, again, what, once the Holy Spirit's involved, it's, it's, <laughs> it's stronger than glue, right? It's stronger than anything. And he will fix it, right? But we have to have faith that he will fix it. And we also have to understand that, you know, we have to rely on the Lord to be able to use us to be able to mend it as well. Not just doing it just because I just told you today, right? Um, and, and that's, that's really important. And again, like, as it says here, keep the unity of the spirit. You know, a lot of the time we don't really realize, right? You know, when it comes to the body, and some of you may have heard me say this, but, you know, sometimes, you know, a piece of our body gets hurt, like our finger gets hurt, right? And this is the body, right? And it's like, people don't realize, but all the other parts in the body, they all, we all feel that. It, we're all one. When we come together, we're all one, right? It's all body of Christ. So any part that gets hurt, whether it's the bone, whether it's the finger, whatever it's the toe, best believe you're gonna feel that you know what i mean and and that's obviously you know um obviously in real life now going into the spirit you know what i mean with the body of christ when a brother gets hurt where a sister gets hurt where anybody it, it, it should affect all of us because we're all one in the body right we all connect together right there can't be one piece missing for the body to be complete that's not how that works everybody plays a part everybody makes a difference when it comes to that body of christ that's why we need to focus on even the little parts even the little parts we need to focus on. That's something that we all need to do. But, but us coming together and with the Lord's will will bring that peace. When we come together in unity, even as a family, you know what I'm saying? This is something that we're all working on, right? Um, friends, all relationships, whatever the case may be, at least do your part, even if they may not want to, right? They may not want that peace with you. Maybe they don't want to do that with you. But you genuinely did it from your heart to, to, to mend that, right? To, to go out of your way to fix that, Right? Because the Lord will ask you about it. And best believe the Lord does not forget. You know what I mean? He does. He will bring it up. And not to use it against you, but to show you, to teach you, right? To minister to you. Why haven't you fixed it with your brother? Why have you not? And the Bible talks about sit in heaven sitting across from your enemies. You know, so these are things that we have to think of. And the last one for that one was uh, obviously applying the word of peace. is Psalms 34, 14. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. Turn away f from that evil in your life. Come to the, to, to the you know, victorious side. Come to the side that's going to heal, that's going to mend, that's going to see miracles. You're going to see miracles. Come to that side. Come to that side where you're going to see the Lord work in your life, where you're going to see the loved ones you care about be healed. When you're going to see the Lord just do a mighty work that's going to change you and make you a better person in the kingdom, right? Turning away from the world. The world has nothing to offer. The world is a distraction. Society is going to try to dictate and try to mold you the way they want to mold you. They can't, <laughs> they're going to promise you all these things. Those, are em th those basically are empty promises. Those are not promises from the Lord. Like I told you earlier about that rainbow, the Lord is still showing that promise to this day. There has not been a flood. So that should just come to show everybody here, right? Don't rely on the world. The world has nothing to offer you. Regardless of what the situation you're going through, at the end of the day, that's not going to bring you peace. You know what I mean? We used to go and, and rely on drugs to give us peace. We used to go and smoke weed to get that, you know, that, that mentality, right? Where we, we thought, right? Try to get that peace at that moment, regardless of, of, of what we, you know, of the, of the situation we're in. And you know what's funny? And then when you don't have it, what ends up happening? It happened to me a lot. You know, you get very angry. You get upset. You're like, oh, like, so what was the purpose of that, right? What, what was the purpose of doing all that? You're finding peace 
Now you're not in peace no more. Now you're even angrier than you was before about the old situation. <laughs> so, yeah, and, and that's the thing I'm trying to tell you. Like, I, I've done so many things to try to grab onto certain things in the world to find peace, right? Through the things I've witnessed, to people I knew that died in front of me, to, to so many different, you know what I mean, outcomes. And it, it never occurred to me that the world cannot offer me what God can offer me. The peace that God has is eternal. The, what the world has is external, period. There's nothing to even talk about even after that. Only reason being for that is because the Lord has the final say. After that, nothing else. The world will keep telling you and telling you, oh, do this, do this. How about you go with this person? Oh, forget about that. Do this. And, of course, that voice internally is going to try to, you know, prompt you to go and do those things and then you're going to end up in a worse position than you were before and this is why i tell people when i preach to them all you have to do is just just follow god first why does it hurt to follow him you have nothing to lose but you have so much to gain the world can't do that for you the world is only going to allow you to lose more than when you ever gain it comes with a cost it doesn't come free a lot of people think oh well you know if i do this and you know maybe I might get a Lamborghini at this. Who knows? It's like, but what is it costing you spiritually? What is it costing with your family? What is it costing you in general? Like, what are we really talking about here, right? And for the closing of, of everything, a couple of scriptures I want to share, really important, is Psalms 29, 11. The Lord gives strength to his people, and the Lord blesses people with peace. He blesses us with this. The question is, are you, and like what Brother Mike was saying a while back, are we praying are we seeking? Are we knocking? Like, what are we really doing? And we're expecting this from the Lord? Who are we to expect anything? The Lord doesn't give us anything. Like, he, he doesn't have to give us anything, I should say. He doesn't need to give us anything, but he's still willing to be our provider because he loves us that much. He loves humanity. Is he upset with what's going on? 100%. He, he already knew, though. He already knew. None of us knew what was going to happen. None of us knew what was going to happen now with the world that is now, the way that things are, are, are shaping right now, the way that the enemy is right now trying to push things around. Or not even enemy, just the people themselves, right? With, 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 with all the crime rates going up, with inflation going up, right? People are losing their homes. People are losing family members. People, you know, it's just so much going on. And, and we have to really look at that and be like, wow, man, like, you know what? Like, God already knew. That's why he's coming back. He knew this was going to happen. He allowed it to happen. For that reason, because his return needs to happen. We need Jesus. We, everybody here, the world, across the, you know, on the other side of the world, we all need Jesus. We need that peace. There's no peace right now. The Bible talks about Revelation. Nation will rise against nation, right? Wars will be, a, you know, country versus country, world war. And, and that's the thing. We got to really get into that because the Lord is willing to give that peace. The question is, are you willing to go and seek that peace? And uh, for the last... Scripture is uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.16. May the Lord of peace himself give you his peace at all times in every way. And that's powerful because, again, church, in the beginning of this year, there was a word on this church. A lot of us may remember. Sometimes we forget. It's a process. But we have to understand that regardless of the situation we're going through, it's so hard sometimes. Where we feel like we're not getting anywhere. But we feel like God's not there because, God, you know, you're the almighty God. You could have prevented this. Why didn't you prevent it? But he has his own reasonings in ministering, right? We, we wouldn't value what the Lord is giving us if we haven't gone through it. And that's powerful because sometimes we overlook the small blessings. We overlook the small things the Lord does in our life. And it's okay because we're not human. But let us not forget the roots of that tree. Let us not forget how the tree was bearing that fruit to begin with, right? So it's just a matter of, of, of reminding ourselves, allowing our brothers and sisters to remind us, you know, that there is a God and, he's, and he wants to give us that peace as a church, you know, regardless of how you look, regardless of how you coming in, regardless of whatever the case may be, you know, we're, com we're all coming in for peace. And, and, and regardless of the awkward highs and the awkward hellos and, you know, all that, you know, we all try to come into a place of peace with each other in the world. You know, and this is why the world it is the way it is now. Let's not judge on appearance. Let's not judge based on, of, you know, 
If I were to come up here with, with black eyeshadow, you know, black eyeshadow, would you judge me for that? Would you see me differently? Would you not show me that love that that we had last week and Sunday, and now we're coming in this Sunday? So these are the things that we have to remind ourselves because, again, peace is a very general subject, right? It's a general thing that the Lord provides, but it's the peace is in peace that what brings it together, you know, and that's very important. You know, faith is definitely one of them, and that's another um, study for another day, but. <laughs> Um, and, and that's the thing I'm trying to say, man. We got to continue bringing that love. Even if you're not sure, ask somebody that has wisdom from the Lord, more wisdom than you. And it's okay to ask, right? If you're not sure about a brother, you're not sure about a sister, the way they're coming in, maybe the way they dress, tattoos, maybe they got a scar on their face, whatever the case may be, show them love too. Because at the end of the day, they're, trying to, they're coming here to seek the Lord too. Amen. All right? Well, praise the Lord. Um, I just want to say one prayer um, before we go. That's really important. And I, again, just if you can write that scripture down, even after, if you guys want to ask me, hey, Brandon, what was that scripture again? Let me know because this is a, a, a specific scripture that was put placed on the church. It was placed on that church because I know we're all struggling with peace. I know some of us are going through it. Maybe some of us currently at peace. But it can always change, right, if we're not consistent with the Lord. So, so yeah, I just want to do that and then. We'll start praying, of course, when everybody's ready.